Hey everyone, welcome back. It's time to look at the new Incarnon pistol, the Onos, or should I say, Onos, the new arm cannon. Yep, it transforms into an arm cannon in the Incarnon mode. Now, this pistol has a lot of interesting quirks and functions drastically different in its Incarnon variant, so let's see what's in store. Onos is a pistol, leaning heavily towards hybrid crit and status, however, the normal shot is pure puncture, and has an abysmal fire rate despite being full auto. It's very apparent lots of fire rate is desired. The lack of other innate elements also calls into question gun CO, which we will look into later. The Incarna mode is rather odd. It has a charging and shooting phase, both of which can deal damage. I think the easiest way to sum it up is the charging phase acts like a shrinking Clamora beam, and the shooting phase is like an Opticore shot. The Clamora beam has radiation, whereas the Opticore shot is pure heat. It takes only 12 shots to fully charge the Incarnon mode, however, falls to the same other issues headshot Incarnons have. While multi-shot affects charge rate, overkill ignores remaining multi-shot, and because the normal mode has excessively high damage, for reasons, it can be rather tricky to charge. Due to massively different functionalities across modes, we will have separate builds for normal mode and Incarnon mode setups today. Onos is a rather clunky weapon. The normal mode fires incredibly slowly and I had to triple stack fire rate sources for it to be tolerable. The base reload is 2 seconds, so some reload speed is desired, but this weapon's normal mode is not the best crowd killer. Luckily, perks can fix this a bit. Importantly, Gun CO functions multiplicatively on normal mode only. This means Galvanized Shot is a final multiplier of your DPS and the reason why it outputs such crazy numbers. Remember Tenet Blank's direct hit TPS? Yeah, the same thing here. The TLDR normal mode is insane stomping power, but only on headshots. It is no better than any standard bullet hose for body shooting crowds, but drastically ramps up DPS to ridiculous amounts on headshots. It's a solid choice for demolists, including the new Armatus Denacromec demos because this weapon bypasses their damage reduction and attenuation currently, for whatever reason. Currently, the Onos appears to multiply critical chance mods by a final hidden value when shooting into Zephyr Tornadoes, as well as adding flat crit chance. Now, this has nothing to do with any of its Incarnon perks, is an aid to the weapon, and works even on a freshly acquired rank 0 Onos with no Incarnon trees unlocked. Probably a bug. The Incarnon mode is strange and also really, really one stacking fire rate. Galvanized Scope is the winner here though. The Clomora Beam Charge mode does not have a centralized hitbox but considers every point of the beam to be an origin point for hits. This means that it does not draw a center line from the beam to the closest body part. If any part of the beam cone touches a head, it is considered a headshot, thus activating the headshot requirement for the first perk of Galvanized Scope even on multiple enemies at once even when aiming away from enemies. The charging beam is also strong enough to easily kill fodder even a base steel path seen by these level 180 corrupted lancers. This activates the second part of Galvanized Scope, allowing you to land headshot kills on fodder effortlessly, easily maintaining your 5 stacks. Finally, aiming down sights with this weapon in both modes barely zooms you in, making it easy to shoot at enemies while moving. Therefore, Galvanized Scope should be used on all Incarnon builds for Onos for general base steel path content. Avoid using Galvanized Scope in Endurance for non-full strip setups. Galvanized Shot functions additively at 100% scaling rate on Incarnon mode for the charge hitbox and Opticore shot but does not apply to the Opticore ball hitbox at the end of the beam's range and does not have the multiplicative final bonuses the normal mode benefits from. However, the sheer amount of damage the Incarnon mode outputs more than makes up for it. The only beam to one-up it for heat TPS is Furious Incarnon. Let's take a look at those Incarnon perks. Of course, the first perk tree is the Incarnon Evolution. We've gone over this already. It turns into a very slow charge shot, resembling a shrinking radiation Clamora beam that fires a pure heat Opticore shot at the end. It has extremely high damage, boasting 2.2k in the Opticore shot and 1100 at the end of the beam, or anything that it directly hits, and this is multiplied by 3 innately. The Incarnon mode also has 5 meters punch through with extremely high crit stats and high status. Second perk tree is a no brainer. The Incarnon mode is hitscan and the primary mode projectiles shoot relatively fast so you do not need more projectile speed. The weapon has nearly zero recoil whatsoever so we can also skip that. Both modes desperately want all the fire rate they can get so we pick Rapid Wrath. Third perk tree is also easy. The reload is the main annoyance on this weapon and I would rather cut that down to almost nothing than increase magazine cap, which also does not affect the Incarnon mode. Therefore, extended volley is out. 
we go with Rapid Reinforcements, which cuts Reload by 30%. Stacking this with Merciless on Incarnon mode setups reduces the Incarnon transformation animation by 60%. For normal mode, since this weapon cannot slash and goes raw damage, it cuts deadhead setups down to 1.5 seconds reload. You may consider Hunters for normal mode DPS. Fourth perk is interesting. Normal mode shoots too slow to use hybrid setups well, so we skip elemental access and obviously don't need Incarnon efficiency. Lethal Lance gives the Incarnon mode in a punch through with essentially 100% uptime. However, it is no different than shooting a glorified Boltor Prime without its Incarnon mode. Much higher damage, but do not expect to get high KPM with this due to the small piercing hitbox. It's best used for killing the occasional problematic enemy. For Incarnon mode, you have two choices. Either run Incarnon efficiency for easier charging time to combat the overkill multi-shot problem, especially since normal mode deals so much damage with galvanized shot. Or pick Elemental Excess if you want to build around the heat procs from the Opticore shot since it has high status and can easily pass 100%. The fifth perk is also super simple. Skullbuster does not affect Incarnon mode, but is the best choice for normal mode setups. Impaler's Ferocity is garbage for headshot builds, but is okay for body shot crowd spam. It grants base damage, which is heavily diluted by Gun CO and Weapon Arcanes. Devastation Cascade is the best choice for the Incarnon mode, granting extra crit chance and crit damage from the number of hits landed during the Clamora charging state of the Incarnon mode before the Opticore shot is fired. 6 to 12 enemies is required to consistently score 200% plus on this perk before the big shot. Typically, 4 to 8 enemies I'm shooting here only bring it around the 150 to 200% on stacks. Notice how I don't even have to aim at them directly. The Clamora hitbox is just that big on the charging. Multishot does not affect this perk whatsoever, it is based on enemies hit per tick, not damage instances per tick. Realistically, you will fluctuate between 100 to 250% wildly in mission for Steel Path with this perk. I'll be averaging it at 150% for crit chance benchmarking in builds later. Builds time? Let's take a look at normal mode first. As mentioned, this is not a good crowd killer, because it is basically a full auto shotgun slug. Amazing for headshots, taking out Demless, Acolytes, and Annoying Aximus due to multiplicative gun seal scaling and headshot Incarnon perks. Perk 2 and 3 stay the same regardless of build. If you want to try Hunter's Rearmament for normal mode, be my guest. If you choose to use Energized Munitions, then I would actually recommend using Hunter's. Now for perk 4, because normal mode shoots quite slow despite decent status, Elemental Excess is not that useful here. You can go the heat dot route with a monster hit, but at that point, just use the Incarnon mode. It's much better for dot scaling. I'd go with Lethal Lance. We aren't using Incarnon, so skip the efficiency perk. For perk 5, pick Sequential Skullbuster if you're going for pocket headshots on Acolytes, demos, etc. For crowd clear, pick up Impaler's Ferocity. It will be a 43.5% total damage increase overall. The build is Rock Rosa for crowd clearing. If for priority targets that you intend to armor strip, mod for viral and replace convulsion instead. Accelerated Isotope is flex with lethal torrent. If you're using a manifold bond sentinel setup, Accelerated Isotope allows Onos to independently proc 3 status effects to reliably activate it without needing external primers. Now it comes at the cost of minus 20% fire rate versus lethal torrent and some lower multi-shot though. Damage still is so excessive that the multi-shot loss doesn't really matter. I would strongly recommend stacking this weapon with the arcane velocity as well because it shoots really slowly. Remember that Gun CO is final multiplicative, so on an isotope setup, it will grant plus 360% final damage. Otherwise, standard crits and multi-shot. Pick between Merciless for comfier reload versus Deadhead for priority targets. Point and shoot. There isn't much for me to say about this mode beyond that. Headshots are lethal due to a 3 times natural multiplier with an additional final plus 120% headshot bonus from the Incarnon perk. Deadhead can add another 30%, and keep in mind this headshot bonus is squared for Zatter's Whisper setups. The Incarnon mode setup is a bit more interesting. Remember that it deals 3 times the listed damage on a full charge. It kills trash fodders, acolytes, demolists, everything. However, the long charge time can take time getting used to, which is why stacking fire rate is so important. Even the Firax augment that grants fire rate comes to mind. Body count. Perk 2 and 3 remain the same for fire rate and reload speed, which affects the transformation animation as well. Perk 4 has two choices, either headshot for easier charging or elemental excess for much stronger heat dots. 
Then Karnon mode is 26% status by default, giving up 10% crit for plus 20% status is roughly a 32 to 33% increase over no perk at all. None of the other perks in this tree give DPS buffs anyways. Perk 5 obviously picks Devastation Cascade. Even at just 150% out of the 250% cap, it is still over a 3 times total damage increase versus not using this perk at all. The actual build is quite simple. Perhaps the biggest thing to note is me not using Prime Target Cracker. This is because our crit damage comes from Devastation Cascade instead. If you're only using this to kill single targets, replace Galvanize Crosshairs with Prime Pistol Gambit, and obviously replace the Viral Mods with Prime Target Cracker and Lethal Torn. I would also recommend using Prime Pistol Gambit instead in Endurance setups since you will no longer be able to kill on direct damage. You will also just Prime Viral externally with a different weapon, like for Demolists. Otherwise, use the build as originally stated Viral Heat. We go Cascadia Flare since it's super easy to upkeep with the massive hitbox and Clamora-esque beam ticking on the charging before the shot in Incarnon mode. Remember, you need to be ADS to benefit from Galvanized Crosshairs. It can be stacked by just shooting in the general direction of enemies at base steel path, because the charging part of the shot does enough damage to kill trash fodder and easily headshots, since the entire cone is considered an origin point for the hitbox instead of drawing lines from the center of the beam to the closest body part. Runus Extension is strongly recommended to increase the hitbox of the Clamora charging mode from 14 meters to 22, since hitting enemies with it is required to charge Devastation Cascade. The Opticore shot has a hitbox of 50 meters plus, so Ruinous is really only used for the self-priming and charging of the perk. While secondary outburst works for this weapon, it is not needed at all whatsoever. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe! Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, like I've been doing with Dante's Unbound update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? And that'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching and see you all next time!